The problem with social media. As governments around the world attempt to regulate social media, we ask how an invention that was supposed to support freedom of expression has created such division and hate. Part one, designed for digital addiction. We were told social media would change the world. It would connect people, give a voice to the voiceless, and enable new forms of creative expression. It has, of course, done all of that, but people are now waking up to the toxic effects of social networks, with governments around the world considering ways to regulate social media companies and their algorithms. Where did it go wrong for the giants of Silicon Valley? The answer lies at the heart of their business model. Social media companies make their profits from advertising. Facebook, the oldest and biggest of them all, made $84.2 billion in advertising revenue in 2020. The more time that we spend on a platform, the more ads we see, and the more money these companies make. So it's no surprise that they all want to maximize user engagement. But it's how they do this that's creating the problem. When people are glued to their phones, it's not because the content that social media offers is so compelling per se, but because of the way platforms are designed. Some experts call these designs addictive, as if they were digital drugs. But anthropologist Natasha Schul, who studies casinos in Las Vegas, has a better analogy. Facebook, Twitter, and other companies use methods similar to the gambling industry to keep users on their sites, she says. We see this when we think about infinite scroll, the feature that fills our feeds with endless fresh content. It's addictive in the same way a roulette wheel or slot machine is. Getting constant new exciting results releases small rushes of dopamine in the brain. Aza Raskin, who invented the scroll, has called it behavioral cocaine, with users always returning for more. The like button also triggers dopamine release, just like receiving a compliment. It provides validation and can lead users to base their self worth on their online profiles. The toxic effects this causes have long been known by Facebook and others. Instagram's own research found it to be especially damaging to younger users. And yet, that hasn't stopped them working on a version of their app for children under the age of 13. Part 2 Maximizing Misinformation Addictive apps are not the only problem with social media. Even more dangerous is the spread of misinformation. Fake news is not only found on social media, but the platforms increase its spread exponentially, and the consequences can be terrifying. Unlike television or the press, social media is tailored to the individual user. No two feeds are the same because each user has different friends, interests, and habits. What unites them, though, is the algorithm that curates their content feeds. That algorithm is designed to do one thing keep users engaged and increase advertising revenue. A 2019 Facebook study found that a new, friendless user will begin to be fed divisive and incendiary content in less than a month. This bias towards extreme content is not accidental. An angry user is more engaged, so more economically valuable. Facebook's feed drives clicks and views, but also privileges incendiary content, setting up a stimulus response loop where outrage expression becomes easier and even normalized, says media studies expert Luke Munn. This design feature becomes especially worrying in situations where misinformation risks lives, such as the COVID 19 pandemic. As people were confined to their homes with no idea what the future might hold, misinformation and conspiracy theories about the virus began to spread. One particular rumor stated, falsely, that COVID was caused by 5G telephone towers, which led to some of them being destroyed and maintenance workers getting attacked. Worse, 
misinformation and conspiracy theories have resulted in millions refusing to follow basic medical advice about social distancing measures, resulting in innumerable avoidable deaths. The same design feature has played a role in the massacres of Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar and in sectarian violence in India, where Facebook's 2019 study took place. As well as leading to offline violence and bloodshed, however, this prioritising of controversial content creates what is perhaps the most anti-social aspect of social media, the echo chamber. Part 3. The Echo Chamber Paradox Each of us, to some extent, suffers from confirmation bias. In other words, we choose to ignore information or facts that contradict our personal beliefs and opinions, a phenomenon that social media reinforces and amplifies. Far from uniting people and societies through the sharing of information, social media platforms splinter people into groups that share the same beliefs and biases. This is the paradox at the heart of social media, and one that we all recognize. The fact that social media platforms confirm what we already believe is the reason that many people use them in the first place, says American science writer David McRaney. If the platforms didn't do that, they wouldn't be successful. While it's nice to be around like-minded people, we need balance to stop our confirmation bias becoming extreme. But social media is designed to close us off from contradictory voices, creating what is known as the echo chamber of confirmation bias. This is appealing in theory, but dangerous in reality. This feature of social media is often exploited by extremist groups. ISIS, for instance, and America's neo-fascist Proud Boys use social media platforms to radicalize new recruits at high speed, knowing the algorithm will feed them more and more extreme content and pull them further into echo chambers. These echo chambers create toxic online spaces where abuse is hurled across digital platforms and everyone is angry. They also lead to toxic offline spaces, the deadly storming of the U.S. Capitol in January 2021 being an extreme example of this. Social media giants have responded by deplatforming controversial figures, but this doesn't fix the problem. Why? because alternative platforms such as Parley and Gab have opened their doors to welcome the radicalized outcasts of Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And this month, they will be joined by a new one, Donald Trump's Truth Social. Our online landscape today is one of division, anger, mistrust, and misinformation. Social media which promised to encourage global debate, has instead led to the fracturing of societies into tiny extremist echo chambers. None of this had to happen.